Hello everybody, here we are in Pornic on the Atlantic coast of France. It is a lovely little town, very very sweet. The village is just up a little drying river and it is so cute, it's so lovely. We've been here for a couple of days in this marina, lovely marina. There's a little bit of swell coming in quite often depending on the state of tide which I was kind of surprised about because there's these like massive breakwaters that you think would provide enough protection but anywho not to worry but tomorrow we are going to head over to the islands um, I'm gonna pronounce this wrong I'm sorry to all the French people watching we're going to go to Il Hat what it's got a funny spelling I'm probably not saying it right, I apologise. Bit of a sail tomorrow, 37 miles, and there's going to be very, very little wind, so it might end up being more of a motor. But the sun is out, it's going to be lovely and sunny all week long, and so we are really excited to um, hopefully get a little taste of summer. So, welcome to this week's episode, I hope you enjoy, and uh, we'll see you in the morning, bright and early, to head off to Il Hat. What? Who at? I think it's Il Hat. I'm just trying to find another port tomorrow, so we've got, um, in all fairness, once we clear the marina, we have got between 30 and 40 miles to do. Are we here? Yeah. So there, so 35 miles. But if we're just not making any progress at all. Yeah, because um, there's not going to be any wind, really. Yeah, and we've got a filthy bottom, so we're not going to get anything from the wind. So we've been in about five knots. We'll just head to Huac, which is going to take longer. Huat. Huat. Or the other one. Hat. Hat. Is it Hat and Huat? I think it's Hat and Hodic. Oh, that's it. Hodic. It's at this anchorage, this the Rad de Huat, is amazing. I know, but the wind is going to be coming from the northeast tomorrow night, overnight. If we tuck ourselves in there, we tuck ourselves in there, you're going to be, you should be alright. If it's coming from the northeast, it's the swell boat. The problem is both that you're, ne you're always going to get swell that comes through here. Always. I know, well this is a dilemma, the swell's coming from the west all night long and then the wind comes around from the northeast. It's like, where do you go? Good morning everyone. We're just about to leave Pornick. Slipping the lines now, and uh, we're gonna head off. We haven't even had our coffee yet. We slept in, and we literally woke up five minutes ago. So off we go. Peace, be still, my darling. All is well, my darling. Your anxious heart may as well. Okay, so I know that there's like literally zero wind, but I must say, I almost prefer this to like a windy day where we're sailing, but there's no sun. Exactly, exactly. As long as it's sunny, then we're happy. I think that kind of sums up our sailing. 
Anyway, I'm gonna enjoy my coffee because I didn't get to do that this morning. This coastline is beautiful, isn't it? It's spectacular. The flora has changed completely. Like the even Il Dieu, which is 30 miles south of here. Yeah, completely different. Very flat different. and sandy. Sandy with pine trees. Yeah. That was it. You go to, and then you go anywhere south of there, and it's just sand and pine trees, sand and pine trees, until you get to this demarcation. Then the pine trees, they don't stop; they thin out, but they replace with like kind of more um, you know, oak trees. So there's a lot of oak here. So we've got the fishing rod back, back out. Yep. I'm just saying it's like a sea fishing rod and you know we're there to catch mackerel with it. So we're hoping to catch the mackerel is what you're saying. Mackerel are the stupidest of fish. You haven't got to do anything apart from just put your line out and if you go through mackerel you'll catch them. Uh, yeah we literally do not have any well we have plenty of like vegetables and salad and stuff but um, we don't have any like protein. So we don't have anything to put on the barbecue. Yeah, it'd be nice to catch some fish. I don't know. I don't mind mackerel. I'll leave them in a pinch. I'd rather. I don't know. I'm not, I, I, I really love smoked mackerel. That's that's the best way to eat mackerel, in my opinion. But certainly, if we catch some mackerel today, I'll be very happy and grateful, and we'll be having them on the barbecue tonight. And I'll be uh, I'll I'll be very happy about it. But otherwise, we're we're making good time actually. We're doing six knots. I'm kind of surprised about that. We must have some current with us. I did check if we would have any current with us, and well, that's a good question. What time is it? 9:30. So high water breast was at 6:30. So we've got about three hours, and then I think after high water, uh, after low water, you still got a couple of hours. It's not like against you, but it's sideways, perpendicular. Is it? Anyway, we have exactly one knot of wind. <laughs> we have the main up, it's doing precisely nothing, it's just stabilizing the boat. Fingers crossed we catch some fish. No, I put mackerel feathers. Yeah. So there's like five hooks? Four yeah. Because we, we've caught like more than one mackerel at a time. Oh, we picked up three on a line before. Or like on one pull. Yeah. If you go through the shoulder mackerel, you'll get them. You'll catch mackerel. I know, they're very easy to catch. Even we can catch them. <laughs> Even we can catch a mackerel. If we can easily catch a mackerel, you know they're easy to catch because we are not particularly good at fishing, as a lot of you have pointed out in the past. <laughs> Thanks for that. Do you remember when we set off, I actually went and bought wasabi and kept it somewhere just in case we ever caught a tuna fish? I know, that was five years ago. And it's, it's still waiting. Yeah, I know. Okay, so we have changed our plan a little bit today. Um, we were going to go to an island called Il Hat, Hat but um, sorry about the noise from the main. There's like literally no wind, so every time we go over a wave, the, the, the boom kind of jiggles a little bit. So we've changed our plan for today. We are no longer going to go to Il Hat. We are going to go to an island called, it's just south of Il Hat. Il Hodic. Definitely not saying that right. And um, it's just got an, uh, a port, a harbour, which is uh, better protected from the wind. So the dilemma that we're in is that the swell, which is actually relatively significant today, um, is coming from the west. And the wind at the moment is nothing but overnight is going to fill in from the east so we're going to end up having like the swell from one direction and the wind from the other which is obviously a bit of a pickle so we've just been talking um to one of our patrons and he actually is local to this area he sails around here all the time and he gave us some advice about the best place to anchor tonight and i think we'll actually end up picking up a boy yeah which i'm quite excited about because this is an island that we haven't been to before Jeez. Let me see what's, what the weather's doing. Are you okay with these fishing 
the boats at Anchor Bay. God, that's better. I'm taking the main down. I was doing very little, in my opinion, <laughs> to stabilize the boat. So it was literally just vlogging. <laughs> and uh, it was just making an absolute racket. We put the keel down to provide some stabilization and uh, took the main down. And now we can just enjoy the peace and quiet. Exactly. Yeah, well that'll be that'll be nice if we can be in the little harbour and then there is like a tiny little township. I, I don't know what is in it. Well, there'll be a boulangerie and a, uh, there'll be a boulangerie. There'll be a boulangerie. There'll be a creperie. There'll be a little convenience store probably. It smells big. It's kind of weird because it's like there's no wind and there's you know reasonable, reasonable swell. Every now and again we kind of go over this big wave. We're about how far away are we? Ten miles, Ten miles away from Hodic, and uh, that's ideal because it means that we will be arriving at about mid tide, I think. Uh, we can anchor, uh, but there's the anchorage is not as protected as. Um, the area for the mooring boys so we'll see i mean you know there's no protect protection needed against the wind there is no wind it's just the swell but there's a local phenomenon called the breeze de terre which is like a northeasterly wind that picks up overnight and that's what the situation will be tonight so all the guidebooks and everything say like be aware of that when picking an anchorage because you know two three o'clock in the morning you'll be woken up and you'll have to move your boat which is never a good thing to have to do in the middle of the night believe me where's our fish oh, well, it's not, uh, not fighting today my darling girl tell you how happy I am whenever we come somewhere new it is just so exciting to me I just love it I just nothing makes me happier than the sun shining being out in the water and slowly seeing like a little island that you've never been to before or somewhere that you've never been kind of slowly approach you from the the sea like at first you only see like this little shadow on the horizon then you get closer and closer and it becomes clearer and clearer until you're on top of it and you can see it you can see the beaches you can see the footpaths you can see the roads you can see the trees and you just think you know what that looks amazing and soon i'm going to be there i'm going to be able to explore that new place and as i said it just that just fills me with excitement the little harbour on the north side looks very, very small. Usually, apparently, in the high season, they can get up to 40 yachts in there, rafted up around three mooring boys, which is <laughs> impressive. <laughs> so I don't think we'll have any, like, we'll be able to get space, um, but we might just have to raft up against another boat, which is very normal here in France, by the way. It's something that I have never seen, I don't think, in certainly in the Caribbean or Bahamas, the US, um, or, even really the med but here rafting up is just commonplace you just you just do it we always have fenders out expecting to be rafted everyone does it there's just not enough space for everyone if people don't raft up we'll see babe yeah not french on holiday now some reason yeah well, there's plenty of people out for a down water now So the, the breakwater is there with that little lighthouse is, I guess? Yep. Going in against that boat there, and that fender's at the right height, it's got really 
no, no free ball. Are we going to the middle no, circle? The first one. First one in front. Okay. The one that's just tied up? Yeah. Okay. What do you think? Yeah. Maybe go to the maybe go to the next one, the motorboat. Yeah, okay. We were just congratulating ourselves on a job well done when our neighbours told us that they were actually about to leave. So in order to allow them to reverse out without us having to pass our lines off as well, we simply took a long bow line, a long stern line, took both lines forward around the bow of that little motorboat, attached them both to the sailing boat next to that, and then the motorboat simply reversed back and we tighten the lines to close the gap. <laughs> And the whole operation was as simple as that. Always a little bit worrying when you're doing something for the first time, but in retrospect, it's very straightforward. The only thing left to do was to take a bow line forward to the large mooring buoy in the middle and secure ourselves. What an island. I haven't even walked up the pathway yet and already I'm in love. This place just looks so beautiful. The only way I can describe this, if you've ever watched Father Ted, it's like a French version of Craggy Island. This is nuts. There's always something to look at, always something to watch, always just a tiny little bit of drama. It is, you know, stunningly beautiful. It's wild, the people are friendly, the food is good, it's reasonably priced. They I can't think of a single fault with this place. If you would like to support our video production, then please consider joining our wonderful Patreon community. Our patrons get loads of exclusive content as well as access to things like WhatsApp groups and Facebook groups. They also get rubrics to news way before everyone else, as well as any crewing and meetup opportunities. Just click the link in the description below.